Hello, Gaming Palooza fans, and I have a little uh, video for you right here. I want to show you my little side project. It is a launch box, big box, box. There's too many boxes in that sentence. But yeah, here's the inside of the computer, and basically what this is, it's a uh, front end that pretty much launches into a bunch of emulators, and you can play a lot of different games on this. And I know some of you do not like emulators, but this is actually pretty cool, so you have to check this out. Now this uh, rig right here that I built is inside of a little small home theater PC case and it has 32 gigs of DDR3 RAM. It's a second generation i7 processor. And it has 8 terabyte hard drive. And it has a lot of small little fans that make a lot of loud noise, which is the reason why I was taking it apart. So I had to clean the actual machine out and check on one fan in particular. Uh, thankfully, it's actually running okay. Uh, this also supports the uh, 1050 Ti graphic processor. As you see there, a little small, low profile one. And this is what the front of it looks like, and this is what the back of it looks like right here. Check that out. Now this plugs directly into the TV using HDMI, and uh, it uses an Intel motherboard. So yeah, let's turn it on and find out what this thing does. Okay, so here we have uh, my Samsung 50 inch TV. It's a 4K TV, it's one of the older models. Uh, this model in particular uh, is the, uh, that's actually me right there. Don't pay attention to that bald guy with the Mario shirt. Uh, this is the uh, HU6950, 50 inch. And that's the uh, controller that we're using. Now this is a very interesting uh, thing because uh, this particular launch box, box can actually connect to uh, up to four or more PS3 controllers, as well as connecting to Wii controllers simultaneously. Now you're probably asking yourself, how the heck is that possible? Well, during my creation of this box, I figured out a way of doing it. Uh, I still have not released that information yet, but it uses two Bluetooth adapters, to say the least. Uh, there's a lot of different things I did with this box that has not been, been done yet. Uh, there's a lot of parameter coding, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on with it. As you can see here, we're starting Windows 8.1. I used 8.1 because it runs a lot lighter than 10. And, uh, for emulation, 8.1 is perfect. It has everything that you need. And uh, that's the uh, PS3 controller right there. You see right there in the background, we have uh, an Xbox One controller. And uh, automatically launches into big box mode. So you don't have to use keyboard or mouse. And uh, this is big box modes, and I pretty much added those graphics in myself, and we're turning the controller on right here. Player number one is lit up. Uh, that's big box mode right there on the TV, and you can scan through all these systems right here. We have Sega Saturn, Model 3, Model 2. We have a lot of different stuff here. Just look at that. Game Gear, Dreamcast, Sega CD, 32X. We even have uh, PC games, which I'll get into that a little bit later. And uh, Wii games that actually use the actual real Wii controllers, which is quite interesting. GameCube games, uh, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, standard regular Game Boy games, and we have NES, N64, the next one up there is Intellivision, ColecoVision, here I am moving the camera around a little bit. Let's see if we can uh, zoom in right here, what the hell is going on? Yeah, look at that. The Intellivision, and, uh, yeah. So as the list goes on, there's a lot of Atari consoles also, which I love Atari. Uh, the background animation behind each console is actually something I designed myself. It has, like, a glass effect with the actual games playing in the background. So uh, no other launch box box has that background. And uh, each console image that pops up is actually a PNG transparent image that Pretty much pops up in the foreground with the uh, information on each game which is quite interesting look at this you have all the playstations now i don't have ps3 or uh, well let's check out ps1 right here yeah ps1 and ps2 you can emulate it quite well uh, the ps2 is a little tricky some games don't run quite as well as others but yeah I mean, check out the list of ps1 games we have here and i have a uh, quite a bit of legit ps1 games so of course, there is going to be a handful of games I don't have that are, that are on this list, but I just don't have the room for the games. But 
This is the beauty of emulation. You can actually play these games in a really, really high resolution. See, this is a 4K TV, so it's possible I could play these games in 4K. And check this out. You have all the Duke Nukem games, ECW. Remember that game? Neo Geo. Speaking of the ECW game, I actually uh, remember going to uh, Funko Land for that game, and because it was rated M for Mature, I had, I had to actually call my father to get approval. These are all the Super Nintendo games, and you see the little star beside each title. That means that those games were on the actual favorites list, and whatever you favorite automatically appears on top of the list instead of on the bottom. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom right here, anything that's not starred are not favorite games. So uh, those games are a little bit more easier to uh, find because they're automatically thrown to the top of the list. And here I am controlling the uh, PS3 controller right there. So if we can scroll down a little bit more and show you what we have here. And Super Nintendo is never not really that hard to emulate at all. It's quite easy. So we have uh, PS2 games. These are probably the more challenging games to uh, actually run on this machine. And most of them do run okay. There's a few that some don't run at all, and there's a few that do have some hiccups. So I have to, you know, some work to do on that. Now, for the most part, these games run fine. Now this is running off a second gen i7, so it actually handles perfectly fine on that. It's just the emulator itself is not quite perfected yet. That's the main issue. And the nice thing about this is if you have a pretty good rig, you can actually play decent like 1080p at a higher frame rate and uh, yeah it looks nice here's some of the arcade games we got here that MAME now the interesting thing about the uh, arcade games is that half of these I had to uh, use in a separate MAME emulator I had to use like three different MAME emulators to actually get all this working and the parameter coding was a nightmare and the Atari 2600 games ran inside the MAME emulator as well which is quite interesting we have a GameCube right here, and uh, there's a crap load of GameCube games. I mean, look at this. I still have a handful of my uh, GameCube games over in uh, my what I call my dungeon down somewhere in the bottom shelf. Maybe we'll, someday we'll take a look at those. And I got some more Atari games coming, so I'm main focus is actually showing off the Atari games that I have come in because I really don't have room for them and I want to pretty much uh, do what I can with them on video before uh, putting them in my storage area and we have all the Wii games right here check that out there's a crap load of Wii games and these Wii games actually work with the Wii controller I have actually a, a sensor bar which you probably can't see but it's right underneath the TV underneath the sound bar there's a little sensor bar hiding over there, and uh, it works quite well. Now, these are the PC games that I mentioned earlier. Now, one thing that's very interesting with these is I took the time for each game to remap the controls to work on a PS3 controller. Yeah, I'm using the PS3 controller on this, and each one of these games work fine on that controller. It's actually really, really interesting. Most of them are dungeon crawlers uh, or first-person shooters. Yeah, but check that out. There's not a big selection of them, and the main reason why is because it was a real pain in the ass remapping the controllers for each game. But yeah, it actually works. So this system completely relies off the uh, the PS3 controller, and it works perfectly fine. We're going to test a little game out right here to show you how it looks. Thrasher, Skate, and Destroy, one of my favorite PlayStation games. Let's check this out. Let's see if we can... uh. Yeah, here we go. We got the Rockstar logo right here. This is before uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 came out. It's around when Grand Theft Auto 2 actually released. And this is definitely a very, very underrated skating game. It came out probably, I think, the day before Tony Hawk Pro Skater, something like that. And uh, yeah, it was very, very overlooked. It was more simulation style than, uh, you know, the pick up and play style of Tony Hawk. And uh, it was very, very challenging. I was actually playing this game quite a bit on this box. You'll see in a second once I load my file. But, yes, I haven't played it in probably a couple weeks. So once I pick it back up, 
you'll see that I'm trying to learn how to play the game all over again because that's how tricky the controls are in this game. It's not, not easy at all. It's one of those games that you definitely have to uh, practice with, to say the least. If you don't constantly play it, you can easily forget how to play this game. So let's see if we can pick uh, Roach. It's always, I, I always played as that character, I don't know why, but it's uh, my character of choice. And uh, right now we're in Los Angeles. There's three different levels in Los Angeles. Uh, let's check this out. Got the loading screen right here, and the great thing about emulation is it loads a lot faster than the actual console. And you're about to see some crazy graphics right here. Now this is playing on a 4K TV, so yeah, you're getting some uh, distorted polygon looking graphics because yeah, it's a PlayStation, but yeah, look at that. That looks fantastic on a 4K TV. Look at that. Being able to play Thrasher, Skate, and Destroy, and their 4K graphics. Of course, the uh, textures are not going to be 4K, but you get the point. I mean, look at this. It looks great. And you'll see in a second when I was playing this game, uh, yeah, it's easy to uh, break your bones. As you see there, I broke my bones. And I uh, immediately recovered and got back on my skateboard because I'm not a chicken shit. I'm going to see if I can grind a little bit. I forgot how to do that. So, uh, yeah, look at that. I broke my bones again. I love this game because the ragdoll effects in this game are like ridiculous. You crash into something, your legs and your arms are flapping around over the place. It's ridiculous. There's actually a way you can actually uh, when you jump up in the air, if you hold down the uh, all the top buttons, L1, L2, R1, R2 together, and you use the directions, you can actually throw yourself off the skateboard and break your own bones deliberately. It's a little uh, thing about that game that's quite interesting. I'll have to review that game sometime. I believe I still have the uh, real copy of that game, so I love that game. Now let's check out a few other things here on the list. We'll see what we got going on here. We got the Sega Saturn. Now with the uh, Sega Saturn, I have a I love the Sega Saturn, much like uh, Gaming Palooza fans. I'd say 90% of the Gaming Palooza fans I have love Sega over Nintendo. I love both Sega and Nintendo, but Sega Saturn is definitely uh, one of my pet peeves. I love Sega Saturn. It's one of my favorite consoles. I have a huge collection, probably close to 70 games. But yeah, on the list right here, I probably have about 300 and something games. So I'm not going to lie, I have quite a bit of games on this list I don't own. That are quite expensive. That I probably can't afford. So, this is your chance of actually being able to play these games. If you can hunt them down. And find the uh, ISO files for them. Now, there's quite a bit of games on here. A lot. And as you can see right there, the uh, Japanese box art for each game. I actually designed some of that myself. Because I personally like the Japanese label box art better than the American version or the uh, European version. I don't like the huge long boxes at all. Uh, so, well, there was one that snuck in there. What the hell? So I actually, for the most part, designed uh, a lot of that box art to, uh, well, not all of them, but pretty much whatever game did not release in Japan, I created a custom Japanese box art. So that I can add it into that. So it, it looks awesome. Look at that. Let's play uh, some Sonic R. Let's check that out. Never played this game in a while. Yeah, let's play this game. We got the uh, Sega Saturn starting up here just like the real Sega Saturn. Uh, on this particular rendition of Sega Saturn, the emulation, I have it filtered so it kind of looks like uh, a CRT TV a little bit. So you have those lines popping up kind of a little bit right there uh, but it actually looks pretty awesome wait till you see this I'm gonna play the uh, let's see I'm playing this on the uh, ps3 controller it's a little uh just a tad bit confusing because it's not laid out quite the same as the saturn controller i mean i love the saturn controller the best but i actually have a usb saturn controller so technically i could plug that in and use that but, I'd rather stick with one controller and make it as less complicated as possible. Now let's choose our character here. And you can see there's still a little bit of jaggies on the uh, polygons. I couldn't quite, you know, 
remove all the jaggedness on that, but it looks a lot more clear than it did before. This is Sonic R, me racing right here, and we'll see what place I come in. I'm trying to figure out the controls on this. When you first play this game after a long period of time of not playing it, the controls are very, very difficult. Most people say that this game sucks. I actually enjoy playing this game. It's actually quite challenging, to say the least. The controls are very slippery. So you have to get used to it. You have to get used to it real quick. And you see at the end of this race over here, I actually come in first place. And the reason why I came in first place is because I uh, definitely enjoy playing this game quite a bit. Uh, when I had my Saturn hooked up regularly, I, I would play this game quite often. I remember this was probably the first Saturn game I played in Funkoland when they had it on display, and I loved it. It was pretty awesome. And yes, the controllers do suck, but as you can see right there, I came in first place. I figured out a way around it. And basically, you have to do a lot of jumping. No, it's a self-booting launch box. I don't know if that even exists. I mean, there's a lot of people that have to use the mouse and keyboard to actually click on their big box mode to make it run, but in this case, as soon as you turn it on, it goes on. You don't have to push no buttons. You just pretty much put your PlayStation controller on, and that's it. It's working. And it's pretty awesome. You have a lot of games on an 8 terabyte hard drive. It's pretty crazy. Now, if you guys ever never used... Launch box before you have to download that, and the big box mode is a cost that you have to buy. Which I did buy my copy of Launch Box and Big Box. It's worth it if you have a lot of uh, ROMs and emulators because you can organize them. You can do exactly what I did right here. It's pretty awesome.